Hi, welcome to the Fred in the Shed channel. On this video, we are going to be having a detailed look and later running this superb live steam model from Retro. This is their very, very latest model just released before Christmas, the SE03, sold on the Engine DIY website. If you're in a real, real hurry, I know some of you are, just go straight to the link in the description of this video. You can check it out for yourself. If you're thinking of making a purchase, I do get a good discount code which will save you some money. But I do hope that you stick with the video because this is a lovely model. The SE03 is based around the time of the Industrial Revolution in the Victorian era and is a stationary mill steam engine with a generator and also a working lamppost. All the components that make up this model are either machined solid brass, stainless steel and aluminium. There's very little plastic on this model. There are 38 precision parts in total. All of the more complicated parts are already pre-assembled, so it's simple nut and bolt work. Very enjoyable to build. I took a leisurely two hours for the construction, thoroughly enjoyed it. Once constructed, the model weighs an impressive 2.5 kilograms and size is 26 by 20 by 18 centimeters. The model will run extremely well balanced. It's a smooth running engine. The main shaft with the flywheel has three sets of ball bearing races. There's absolutely zero knocking on this engine, which is sometimes what you find with cheaper non bearing engines. Just going to take you through the startup procedure and then I'll be quiet when we run the engine. So the first option is fuel. I'm going to use liquid fuel. I prefer methylated spirits because it burns quite clean. You can use isoprol, but you do need to use a good industrial quality so you don't get any sooting. Now, they provide you with a wad of cotton wool for a wick. Uh, I thought that was a bit of a cop-out, to be honest. Um, some of the other models, I use stainless steel wicks. Um, this is going to probably get a little bit of soot. Anyway, as you can see, just filling up the dish here with uh, a few syringes of methylated spirit. Just be careful that it doesn't spill over. Next is oiling the machine. Now, as this is a bearing engine, all moving surfaces need to be oiled. I use this Singer oil. I've been using this for a few years now. It's a nice, thin oil. I think it does the job really, really well. Make sure we get some oil, especially on the main shaft. Also, the engine will need steam oil. This is a very, very thick oil. We've got a little reservoir here just by the control valve. Just need to fill this up. This will be fine for about a 15, 20 minute run that you will get out of the engine and that will lubricate the cylinder. Now, one thing that's not provided is an exhaust pipe. A uh, bit of an oversight, really. I just use this piece of silicon tube and also the parts box that come with the model is a good container to use. Next, we have to fill the boiler with water. I like to use the ionized water. You can use filtered rain water, but please, please, please do not use tap water because it contains scale. Now, a bit odd that the fill cap is on the side of the boiler itself. So I had to use a syringe, but this became obvious when you look down through the boiler into the firebox, it is in fact hollow. This is a cylindrical sleeve boiler, which means it will heat up a lot quicker. As this was a very cold day, close to freezing, I preheated the water in the microwave. The sight glass on the side of the boiler makes it very, very easy to put in the correct amount. You just need it over halfway, around about three quarters is ideal. And that's really about it, just testing the safety valve here. So I'm going to be quiet now and let you enjoy the startup and the sounds of this wonderful steam engine.
that's the Retro Zero SE, the very latest vertical boiler stationary mill engine. I've got to say that every retro model that I do, and I've built the, S the SE01 and the 02, they just raise the bar that little bit higher with the quality and also the attention to detail. Quite amazing, really, the, uh, the effort they put into these models. Now this model came out uh, just before Christmas and I think quite a few people treated themselves to Christmas presents, I don't blame them. And there's already some very, very positive reviews for this model floating around the in internet, especially on the Engine DIY website. Now I will leave a link in the description to Engine DIY where you can purchase this model. I also get a unique discount code which saves around about 15% on the purchase price, so it's well worth using. Also, Engine DIY, they do have sales throughout the year and uh, offer discounts on top of that. So you can save a fair bit of money. If you go over to their website, guys, it's just worth having a look around if you haven't been over there before. Uh, you'll be blown away with some of the models they produce. Not only steam engines, but also working gasoline engines for RC cars or engines that stand uh, on a base and model jet engines as well. You could spend an absolute fortune, remortgage your house. Um, it's very tempting as well, but there are, say, there are links in the description. And that's it, that's the end of the video. Thank you for your view time. There's the thumbs up from Fred in the Shed. If you're into this stuff, um, perhaps consider me a sub because I do have the additional little workshop which matches this engine. It's on order, it's coming in very, very soon, and there'll be a video uh, on the channel for that where we can have a look. But as for now, as always, please, please, please look after each other. Stay warm because it's really cold at the moment in the UK as I'm making this video. And of course, catch you on the next channel. Cheers, guys. Fred's in the shed where the magic unfolds. Fred in the shed with his trusty CB. He's a friend to the lonely on a frequency